Good day, folks. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Narbox 2.0 that was just released. There are many reviews on YouTube about the Narbox 2.0. Now, this review is going to be kind of different because it's not only really just a review, but it's also going to be kind of a demonstration and tutorial. Now, my review is coming from the perspective of a mobile video editor and how the Narbox 2.0 really helps my workflow, especially when using apps like LumaFusion. I'm going to go in and show you some of the basics of the Narbox and how it works. I'm going to show you how it integrates with LumaFusion, and I've got a few tips for you to get the most out of it. So let's just jump right in and take a closer look. So this is the Narbox 2.0 and it became available for purchase last week. This here is the one terabyte version. I'm a mobile content creator and mobile video editor and all I mean by that is that I shoot all my YouTube videos on an iPhone which is what I'm filming on right now and then I do all my editing either on an iPad or on my iPhone as well. I use LumaFusion to edit all my videos. It's a really powerful app and uh, it actually integrates really well with the Narbox. Now for me the decision to become a mobile editor was a personal choice. I like the freedom of being able to edit anywhere on my iPhone. IPad. But not only that, the iPad Pro is very powerful and very capable of editing 4K footage, and not only 4K footage, but several tracks of 4K footage. You don't have to create proxies or shadow files, it can just go through it without getting bogged down. And if you have any experience editing 4K footage on a laptop, you know that sometimes is not always the case. However, it does come with some challenges, and anybody who does any kind of video editing on an iPad or iPhone knows basically that's to do with storage. Large 4K video files can eat up your storage very quickly. And up until a couple weeks ago with the release of iPadOS 13, there was no really easy way to manage files, import files, export files, and just for storage backup. iOS 13 allows us to plug in external drives now, but it still does have some limitations. And that's where the Narbox 2.0 comes in. It's a really great tool for video editors, people who do all their editing on an iPad. Now, of course, it's a great tool if you edit on a traditional laptop or computer. But like I said, this video is more from the perspective of a mobile editor. Now one problem with the Narbox 2.0 is the price. It is very expensive and for a lot of people that price is out of reach and sometimes not even justifiable. Now I'm hoping by the time I'm done this video anybody who's been on the fence about purchasing a Narbox, maybe you're wondering if it's justifiable for the cost or if it's something you should skip. Hopefully we'll be able to answer those questions for you. Now just a basic overview of the Narbox 2.0 for those who aren't aware what it is. Basically this is a very rugged and durable backup solution for when you're out in the field. You can see at the back of the drive here we have a couple different ports. We have an SD card reader, we have a USB-C port, and we have a micro HDMI. We have a second USB-C port at the front there. We have an OLED screen and four buttons on the front. And what this allows you to do when you're out in the field, whether you're shooting on a GoPro, a drone, a DSLR, anything that takes a memory card, you can take the memory card out of the device, plug it into the unit, and it's going to automatically back it up. Now the first thing I'm going to do is power up the Narbox, and you do so by pressing that very first right button. You do a long press on it, and that will boot up the Narbox. You got to remember there is a computer inside there, and just like any computer, it's got to turn on. Once we got the Narbox, box name up on the screen there it's ready to go so we're just going to open up the back flap I put the GoPro micro SD card in this card reader that is included when you buy the Narbox and we're just going to plug it in Narbox will detect right away that we've plugged in a card and it's going to give us a few different options here. Once it's detected the card you can see there it gives us a few options. We can eject the card, we can just do a simple backup and basically that's just going to back it up with the default settings. But one of the nice things about the Narbox is you can make custom presets and I'm going to get into that here in a minute. I've already made some custom presets so I'm going to go to advanced. I'll just bring that up so you can see it. We'll hit the next button. It's going to ask us where we want to back it up to because we could technically plug in another drive to this and I'll kind of go over that in a minute here too. But right now we don't have anything attached to it so we're just going to select Narbox SSD. And you can see here I've got different profiles for some of the different cameras that I use. So because I'm importing a GoPro media card I'm going to select my Hero 7 Black. And you can see there, it's going to start the backup procedure. Now, depending on how much footage you have stored on that memory card, it could take anywhere from a few minutes, upwards to five, even ten minutes if you've got a full card. Uh, you can see there that it has done a verification of the backup. That's one of the nice features of the Narbox 2.0. It does a checksum verification after you've transferred the media. So you have that peace of mind that everything transferred properly, you've got confirmation, and it's verified everything. You don't have to worry that a file has become corrupted or things didn't transfer properly. Once you're done, you just eject the disk and you can pull it out. 
so you can really see how valuable this would be out in the field. You can back up your drone footage, your GoPro footage. You don't have to worry about memory cards maybe becoming corrupt and losing a day's worth of work. Not only that, it saves a lot of time. When you get home and you're ready to edit, everything is already on a hard drive ready to go. Because of the built-in computer, you can do things like transcode video, you can build proxies, build previews, and all kinds of different things. And we're going to cover that here as we go along. This thing is weatherproof and durable, so it can take a beating, which is something you really want when you're out in the field. So let's talk a little bit about what's the difference of a drive like this. This is the Western Digital My Passport Pro. It's an SSD drive as well. It has the same kind of backup feature where you can plug in a memory card into that slot there and it will automatically transfer everything over. Some people might be wondering why there's such a big price difference between the two drives. The Wireless Passport Pro SSD comes in about $450 to $500 whereas the one terabyte version of the Narbox 2.0 is $899, so that's quite a price difference. And that's basically to do, like I said, this actually has a built-in computer that can do a lot of behind the scenes work. With the Wireless Passport Pro, once you plug a card in there, the only notification that you have that data is being transferred over are the little flashing lights on the front. They'll stop flashing once everything has been transferred over. But the problem is when it's done, you really don't know if it's worked. You'd have to actually go into the drive, look at all your files, make sure everything is there. Whereas the Narbox gives you that checksum verification so you know everything is proper and nothing has become corrupted and everything's transferred over properly. And on top of that, there are many other differences as well. When you connect this to something like LumaFusion, when you copy files over, it has to copy over the whole entire file. And that can become kind of a problem, especially if you're just taking little 10 second clips out of say 40 different videos, it's gonna have to copy the entire videos of all 40 videos over just to get those little clips. Whereas the Narbox 2.0, when you've selected just little clips from within a video file, it's just gonna copy that section over. And it's able to do that because of the onboard computer. Now the other thing too, the app that comes with the Western Digital SSD drive is not very good. It's not very practical. You can't really do a lot with it. It's slow, it's cumbersome, and uh, just really doesn't have a lot of use. So now let's take a look here at what we can do with the Narbox once we have our content on it. So just like other wireless hard drives, the Narbox 2.0 is broadcasting a wireless signal. So what we're going to do now is connect to the wireless signal that the Narbox 2.0 is broadcasting. You can see there it's listed in my networks. I've already entered a password in, but you will have to put a password in if it's your first time. So now at this point we've connected to it and we have two apps that we can use right now. We have one here, you can see it's called Safekeep and we have one called Selects. Selects is more geared to photographers. It's a great little app. I'm not going to get into that in this video here. Uh, what we're going to be taking a look at is the Safekeep app. That's kind of the main app for it and how you do all your media management. So once we've launched it, you can see at the side here, it's listing our Narbox SSD. This is our browser and how we view our media. We can click on it and you can see it's got all the different files that I've transferred over. Remember how I mentioned earlier about profiles? You can see here it's made different folders for all the different gear that I've transferred from. I've got a Hero 7 Black, Mavic 2 Pro, Osmo Action. For me, the nice thing about profiles, it keeps all my media organized. When I go into it, I can see, oh, there's my GoPro footage or there's my Mavic 2 Pro footage. So what we do here to make a preset, you can see here I can click on presets. Here's all the ones that I've built here on the side. All we do is create a new one. You can see here we can make a folder name. So if you're going to be making one for a Canon camera, put the name Canon in there. And then we'll hit add. So we've made a folder called Canon and that's where everything's going to be transferred into. But say you have different models of Canons, you could actually add all the different models of the different Canon cameras that you own. But for now, we're just going to leave it as Canon. So then we hit next. We can name our preset. You can call it whatever you want. There's our new preset now. So now that we've created it, it's going to reflect on the Narbox. So now when we import a uh, memory card from a Canon camera, we can actually select Canon from the list. Now, if you've made a mistake or you want to rename it or edit it, all we do is hit those three dots and you can see we can modify it, we can rename it, or we can delete it. Just like that. And the other thing we can do is change some of the backup settings. So let's click on our settings button. And here are some of the settings here that we can change. By default, I believe they're all off when you get it and you have to enable the ones you want. The first one here is the MD5 checksum. You can enable or disable that depending if you want it to do a verification when you've transferred files over. You can set it to do a smart backup. And basically what that does, it allows you to back up your memory card. You can go then shoot some more content, plug the same memory card back in. It knows what files have already been transferred and will only transfer anything new. So that allows you to do incremental backups throughout the day. The next one is flatten folders, which definitely is a time saver. And basically that gets rid of the file structure that's on the memory card when you're transferring over. You know, in some cameras, you've got to go two or three layers deep to actually get at the photos and videos. It basically gets rid of that file structure. So when it transfers stuff over, 
you've just got the raw files. And the next here, which I really like, is folder by extension. And that's great, like for example, on a GoPro, if you've shot uh, RAW files, if you've shot JPEGs, you've shot uh, video files, what happens is when it transfers over, it's gonna go into the GoPro folder, but it's gonna have a folder called MP4, a folder called RAW, and a folder called JPEG. It's really nice, keeps things organized, and it makes it easy to find your files. So now let's go in and take a look at some footage here, and I'll show you some other stuff you can do with it. That's gonna save you a lot of time when editing in something like LumaFusion. So let's select our Mavic 2 Pro folder. Now you can see here, because I had that setting on to separate by file extension, that we've got a folder called DNG, that's all the raw files. We've got a folder called JPEG, just for standard photos, and we've got an MP4 folder. So that's where our videos are going to be. You can see here we've got thumbnails of all the different video files. We can bring a video up, we can preview it, scrub through it, kind of check it out. We can go back to the browser. These three dots beside each file allow us to do various tasks. If we click on it, you can see here we can save it directly to the iOS photo app. We can copy files, we can move files around. We can rename the files, which is really nice. Sometimes it's nice to put a name to the file so you know what it is. You can see we can transcode the video. That's gonna make a lower resolution version in 720, just so when we're editing on something like a laptop or a computer, we've already got our proxy files ready to go. And that's where it can save you a lot of time. You can make all your proxy files long before you get home to do your edit, and that way everything is ready to go for you. We can prepare video preview, and that's a really important one. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more here in a minute. And we can delete the file. So let's uh, talk about the copy and move. So we can move things around within the NAR box. Say we want to organize things for an edit that we're working on. But we can also plug another drive in something like this SanDisk SSD. And we can then copy the files directly from the NAR box over to it without ever leaving the app. Now one thing you really want to do if you're going to be doing video editing in something like LumaFusion. You want to prepare video preview. I'm not quite sure what that does behind the scenes, but basically it allows you to scrub through the videos smoothly. Now you can do that for each individual file, but we can go back to the main folder. We can select the whole MP4 folder and then select prepare video previews. We'll hit proceed and it's gonna go through and do that. Now I've already done it to that folder, so it was really instantaneous there, but depending on how many files are in there, it could take a few minutes to create the previews. So once we've done that, these files are now ready to go and we can edit them in LumaFusion. Let's launch LumaFusion now and see how it all works together. So here we go, we got LumaFusion launched. Let's go ahead and create a new project. So we've got a new project made and I've got an empty timeline. So now we want to access some of the files off the NAR box. The first time you launch LumaFusion, it's going to detect that you're connected to the NAR box and it's going to tell you it's going to add it to your library. So if we click on our sources up here, you're going to see we now have NAR box listed. We can click on it and there you can see we have the same file structure that we had on the NAR box. So we can go into our Mavic 2 Pro folder. We can click on MP4 and you can see here's all the files that we had. We can bring up a file. Once we have it open here, we can scrub through and check things out. Now, because we made the video previews, it's going to scrub a lot smoother. If we hadn't have created those video previews, it could be a little choppy as it's trying to buffer the media as you go. So now I'm just selecting a beginning and end point. And uh, so now this is where the magic happens. We can now drag this down to our timeline. Now it has to download the media from the NAR box over. And this is where the tip and I'm going to show you here in a minute that's going to speed this up incredibly. But basically, it just had to download that little section. And that's where the benefit of the NAR box over something like this Western Digital Drive, it's just copied over that little segment to our iPad. If we had done that with the Western Digital Drive, it would have copied over the whole file. So you could really eat up the memory on your iPad just by making one simple edit. We can continue working on our edit, bringing in more clips as we wish. The other nice thing too is when we're done, we can export it directly to the NAR box as well. You can see the NAR box is listed there. That's brilliant the way that works. Not having to transfer over the whole entire clip, that's gonna save you a ton of space and a ton of time. But when it comes to video editing and managing files on your iPad, there's a lot more we can do with this, and I'm gonna show you that here now. So by default, when you turn your NAR box on, it's in a mode called field mode. When it's in field mode, that just means that you can take this out in the field, transfer your data over, it broadcasts a Wi-Fi signal so you can connect your iPad to it wirelessly. But there's two other modes here we can switch it to. One is called mass USB storage, and the other is USB Ethernet. So to do that here, I'm gonna show you on the screen here. We're gonna go over both modes and what they do. If we click the down button, you can see we can then scroll to settings. We'll click the side button there. It then has an option there called dual role USB. So let's click on that. Again, we'll hit the side button to select it. So you can see there, there's our different modes. We have default, which is what it's in now. 
We have mass storage and we have USB Ethernet. Let's set it to mass storage. It's going to ask us if we want to cancel active task. Hit yes, continue. So now it has to reboot and it's going to reboot into mass USB storage mode. So it's done rebooting and as you can see there, it now says USB mass storage. So that means it's in mass storage mode. When it's in USB mass storage mode, it basically just turns this into a traditional hard drive. We can take the USB-C cable that comes with the drive, plug it into any laptop or computer and use it like a traditional hard drive. At this point, we can also plug it into our iPad and use the Files app to browse it. You can see here we now have a Narbox location. And I should have mentioned this before I'd done that. If it's not in mass storage mode, uh, the Narbox will not show up directly in your files app. You'll only get this what's called safe keep app. That allows you to go into it when it's in wireless mode. But once we switch it to mass storage, it actually pops up as Narbox. And then we can go in and browse files like we do with any hard drive we plug into the iPad. We can bring the files up, preview them play them. However, the one thing you have to keep in mind when it's in mass storage mode, LumaFusion can't read it. But with that said, that's what the other mode is for. That's what the USB Ethernet is for. So let's uh, put it into that mode now. And again, we're going to go to our settings and this time we're going to select USB Ethernet. It's got to reboot again and when it comes up it's going to be in USB Ethernet mode. USB Ethernet mode allows the Narbox to function just like it does wirelessly but with a wired connection. Wireless is great for some situations but having it hardwired in is going to give you a lot faster data transfer. When you're video editing all your files are going to transfer over a lot quicker. You can see there it's now rebooted and it says USB Ethernet. So now we can plug it into the iPad. We can launch LumaFusion. We can go over to our Narbox. But now what's going to happen when we download a section, you can see here it transfers a lot faster. And just like that, it's done. Now, if you're just working with small files, working wirelessly works just fine. But if you're working with a lot of really large files, hardwiring it's really going to speed up the process and make it that much more uh, efficient. So yeah, that is the Narbox 2.0. Now, I only touched base with just some of the features. Like I said, this video was about more video editing. But if you're a photographer, it has a whole suite of different tools to help you along. So the big question is, is this something that is useful for you? You know, only you can really answer that question. For somebody like myself, this uh, makes a lot of sense. It's it's expensive, it's a big investment, but for me, I'm gonna make good use of it and it's really gonna help with my workflow. For the average person who does a little bit of video editing, you know, a drive like this is probably more than sufficient. It'll allow you to get done what you need to get done. You can back up files, you can retrieve files, and it comes in at a fraction of the cost. For the price difference, I've kind of shown you what you get extra on a device like this over something like just a standard SSD drive. And you'll just have to decide whether the cost is justifiable for what the benefit you're going to get out of it. Now, one thing I haven't really touched base on yet, and I'll just show you here quickly, you can see we have a removable battery. So if you're a person who's going to be out in the field for a long period of time and think you're going to need extra batteries, you are able to do that. For myself, I just went with the one battery. It's more than enough for me. After all, you can charge this via a power bank. So if you're out in the field and it starts to get low in power, you can top it off and I'll just show you that here quick. Here I've got an anchor power bank. Now this one has USB-C power delivery so it's a fast charger. We'll plug it in and you can see there it is now charging. So that's another option for you instead of purchasing extra batteries. Now this video's kind of gone on a little bit longer than I was anticipating but there was a lot to cover but one last thing I do want to show you here quickly before we go is how to connect external drives to the Narbox. I'm going to take the SanDisk SSD. So in the back of the drive there I'm going to plug it into a USB-C port and right away you're going to see it pop up on the SafeKeep app. So we can now go into the Extreme SSD and we can browse all the files that we have stored on it just like we did with files that were stored on the Narbox. And you can do everything off this drive that you can with files stored on the Narbox. You can transcode your videos, you can build video previews, you can move files around from the Narbox to the SSD or vice versa. Not only that, if we relaunch LumaFusion, now if we go into our Narbox SSD, you can see here that it lists the Narbox and the Extreme. So we can now go in and pull files off the SanDisk SSD as well, and it will work in the exact same way. And just like when you're pulling files off the Narbox, it's only gonna pull in the segment from the clip that you select. Now I'm hoping at some point down the road they change the way that LumaFusion interacts with the Narbox. I would love to see where we can edit directly off the Narbox where you don't even have to transfer any clips over. I don't know if that's a limitation depending on what kind of iPad you're using or iPhone. It may not even be possible, I'm not 100% sure. That would definitely be really nice if they did update LumaFusion to be able to work in that fashion. Well folks that's basically it for my video. 
That's the Narbox SSD. Hopefully you enjoyed it and got some value out of this video. If you were on the fence about the Narbox, hopefully that kind of helped make up your mind, whether yes, you do want it or no, it's not for you. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.